Hey, what's up guys? So this is my 2011 Mazda Miata. I bought it about uh, four and a half years ago. And since then I've just loaded it up with way too many countermeasures. Radar detectors, laser jammers, dash cameras, pretty much packed the heck out of the car. Well, it has come time now to trade it in and get something else. Now I'm not gonna tell you quite yet what it is that I'm replacing it with, so let me know if you have any guesses, but a hint is that it's gonna be something much roomier and uh, it's gonna be a lot easier to install a bunch of countermeasures, whether it's on the windshield or in the front grill. Now I love this car. We've been on a lot of adventures together. We've been all over the place, uh, had a bunch of great experiences, and I love driving this Miata. It never ceases to put a smile on my face, which is really the reason that I bought it. But nevertheless, it is time to swap vehicles. Now I'm trading the car in tomorrow, but before I do that, uh, I need to of course remove everything out of the car. And before I do that, I wanna give you guys a quick tour of everything installed here in the vehicle, uh, all the countermeasures, my testing setup, give you guys a behind the scenes look, and then uh, let's go ahead and rip everything out of the car and bring it back to almost normal. All right, now starting off at the front of the vehicle, uh, this is where most of the, well, external countermeasures are installed. We've got uh, the ALPs, so one here, a second head right there. They're actually drilled into the grill itself. Uh, so I had to have this part professionally done, which was really nice, but then it makes it almost impossible to adjust the heads afterwards. And so for the next vehicle, I definitely want a little bit more adjustability on the head placement. Uh, now, as far as radar detectors, I currently have three remotes installed in the grill. I've got the uh, NetRadar DSP, uh, the Stinger VAP, as well as the Redenso RCM. Uh, in the next car, I wanna go ahead and copy all this over. I'm gonna be adding another ALP head to the center, and I'm also gonna be adding the uh, Max CI 360. And then in the middle here, this is just the toll pass. Now in the rear of the vehicle, I've got uh, two more ALP heads right here, and they're actually installed on a custom license plate bracket that uh, mounts behind the license plate uh, because of the fact that with the uh, rear trunk area, there's not a good place to mount under there or into here itself. So I had my installer actually create a bracket here, um, which does kind of move over time. It doesn't stay exactly where I want it, but this was kind of the best solution that I had here for the Miata. Now, as far as mounting a rear radar detector head, there's not a lot of good options here in my Miata. Uh, so for the rear antenna for the Redenso RCM, I actually have it mounted uh, right underneath here, just above the tail light, kind of pointed out this way. Uh, it's not ideal because I do have metallic paint and so it uh, does kind of compromise performance and it sort of messes with the arrow so they don't work as well, but you know, you do kind of have limited options here and that's where I installed it in the rear. Uh, speaking of which, if you take a look at the rear window, you'll see right here where I used to mount some of my uh, rear dash cams and then after I removed it, because I'd installed them on the tent itself, it actually kind of pulled the tent back. So uh, pro tip, if you're gonna be installing to the uh, rear window, try to avoid attaching directly to the tent because yeah, it could cause some issues. Now moving on to the interior, there's a lot going on in here. So let's take a look at uh, everything inside the cabin, especially from the driver's perspective. So seated here, I've got most of my countermeasures installed here. I normally have my uh, primary windshield mount radar detector right there, but because I'm focusing more on dash cams right now, that is gone. But you'll see things like uh, the normal hardwire power cable right there. I've got another power cable uh, tucked up right here, specifically for Redenso detectors. And I typically have a third power cable actually behind the rear view mirror uh, for any blend mounted radar detectors. However, right now, because I am focused on uh, dash cams, you can see I've got uh, a GoPro right here. This is a Hero 7 that I've got set up to uh, record whatever radar detector is mounted low. I don't normally like running radar detectors low, but for video purposes, it looks a lot better to have a camera mounted low, and there's not really a good way to record it if it's mounted up here. Uh, I've got my phone right next to it, and this is really cool because it's got uh, wireless charging and everything. So uh, when I've got the car on, boom, the phone just starts charging, which is great. Now on the windshield, I've got a number of radar detectors mounted at the moment. I've got the Blackview DR900S two channel, which is my primary dash cam. I've got the three VFO A119 series dash cams. And I also have the Thinkware FA200 IRC. Uh, this is a two channel one. One points out the front. The second one uh, it points out the rear. And it's got two IR LEDs like this that record into the cabin while I'm driving. And then on the back of the car, I've got the uh, rear camera for the Blackview DR900S. If you take a closer look, you'll notice that the camera, it's no longer mounted to the uh, rear window itself. It's now actually onto the metal, and that's just to avoid some of the issues I've had with uh, removing the tint. Down by the shifter, I've got my ALP controller. So when it comes time to uh, kill the jammers, it's just super easy. Bam, I can just shove my hand in this direction and the uh, kill buttons are right there. Now in my instrument cluster, I've got the LED right there for the ALP. So when I get shot with laser, uh, front or rear, that'll light up. And then if I'm running the NetRadar DSP, that also indicates direction right there too. On the center of the dash, I've got my uh, remote mount radar detector. So I've got the Redenso RCM right here. Uh, there's the removable display and the Stinger VIP sitting right next to it. I almost never use the Stinger VIP, so it's removable display. It's actually sitting in my glove box. Now down here next to the shifter, I've actually got uh, some expansion ports. So things like uh, extra cigarette lighter ports right there for installing different things, maybe a windshield mount radar detector. Uh, I've got a USB cable that runs out to uh, power the GoPro while I'm driving. So I've got uh, some expansion ports right here and I've got some other actually tucked right there, which I'll show you in just a second. Now, whenever I'm recording videos of myself sitting in the driver's seat, uh, I'm recording it onto a GoPro, which is just mounted up here into the corner of my windshield. 
Uh, now, one fun fact, uh, sometimes when it's sunny, like it is right now, the sun can actually cause a little bit of flare uh, when the light is actually hitting the lens. And so something that I'll keep in my glove box is actually just a blank sheet of paper. And then what I'll do is uh, when I need it, I'll just kind of take the sheet of paper and uh, just stick it up like this next to the GoPro. And then it's blocking the light. And now the camera's gonna get a much nicer looking image. Now, speaking of the glove box, let's take a look in here. I've got uh, just kind of random assorted testing gear. Uh, oh, you can see the flare that I was talking about earlier. To block this sort of flare, I've got the sheet of paper. Uh, underneath, I've got the uh, removable display for the Stinger VIP. Uh, I've got a couple different uh, USB cables for everything I need to update over USB. So you can see they're all labeled. There's the Stinger. Uh, here's the ALP. And here is the Redenso RCM. Uh, speaking of testing gear, I've got things like my pocket radar in here to trigger different detectors on K-band, uh, different screwdrivers to take my car apart, uh, lights to help make that easier, uh, different power cables, uh, cigarette lighter plugs, food, all sorts of just random stuff. Now down here next to the passenger seat, uh, we've got a bunch of stuff down here as well. Uh, the first thing is the ALP CPU, um, which I actually can't get all the way up. I've got so much stuff tucked up under here, uh, like the Stinger VIP CPU. That's all under here, which you'll see once we start taking things apart. Uh, the ALP CPU is right there, and you'll see there's another cable right here, uh, which is for the Redenso RCM. So I normally run uh, with the ALP itself, uh, standalone. I don't actually integrate it with the Redenso, but if I want to have uh, ALP Redenso integration, I can just unplug this cable, plug this in, and then I can uh, have the two integrated. Underneath here, I've got things like my uh, Bluetooth module, speaker, all this kind of stuff is under here. Uh, now, next to the seat, I've got a couple of different things. I've got things like a spare iPhone cable for when I've got the phone actually sitting right here, which I don't normally do. Uh, I've got the uh, cigarette lighter expansion thing, which is actually uh, plugged into a hardwired cigarette lighter port, which is under here. However, right now I'm using that extra cigarette lighter port to uh, power some of the extra battery packs that I have here. Underneath the uh, passenger seat, I've got three different dash cam battery packs. I've got my black VB124, I've got the Cell Link Neo, and I've also got the Cell Link Neo expansion, which fun fact is actually plugged into my black VB battery since this is what I use as my primary one. And uh, yeah, they are compatible, but I've actually got, believe it or not, three different battery packs. This one is running the ThinkWare camera. These two are running my Blackview. As usual, I like actually uh, having everything labeled to make it easier to tell what's what. Now back behind the passenger seat in here, I actually had the Redenso RCM CPU, which uh, once we pull the back off, I'll show you that. Um, it's not the ideal place, especially having the speaker right behind the passenger area, but it's the only place that I had room. Uh, this whole area here in the dash is completely full of stuff. Now, right in here, just next to the glove box, I've got a bunch of extra power stuff that I've added. So we'll pull off the weather stripping real quick and then peel back this piece of plastic. And then in here, you'll find a whole bunch of different cables inside. Since I guess it is time to start uninstalling everything, let's just start pulling everything out. It might be kind of tough to tell, but you'll see some cigarette lighter port stuff in there. It's basically an expansion port where I've got different uh, dash cams and accessories that I want to add in and uh, make it easier to plug in a variety of different accessories. Now, kind of the main area of all this is pretty much this. It's a cigarette lighter splitter, and uh, it's got USB ports to plug in different dash cams, and I even had to expand it again to add more stuff, add more USB ports. So basically a bunch of dash cams or different accessories if they were cigarette lighter stuff uh, made it easy to do here. For the next car, I definitely want to have something like this again, but because you can see I keep having to build on it, it might be better just to put one in that has a bunch of accessory ports already. Uh, that way it makes it easier to uh, expand later on down the line. Now inside here, I also had the plug for the uh, PowerMagic Pro to run the dash cam. So for my uh, Blackview dash cams, I could either run it off the PowerMagic Pro or I could run it off of uh, my Blackview battery pack under the seat. With this car, it's really easy to get up here and run a whole mess of cables. You basically just need to do things like uh, start opening the convertible top like this. Um, you just unscrew these and then you're able to start pulling down this whole piece of plastic. And I've got, as you can see, just a whole bunch of cables that all run up into the headliner. And then because with this car, there's no side airbags or anything, it makes it really easy just to run all the cables down there. Now with the top open and once we remove these metal plates, uh, we're now able to pull off the A pillars where you can see uh, underneath here, I've got a whole bunch of different cables installed. Over on the other side, the same thing. We'll pull this back and you can see I've got uh, a bunch more cables on this side too. Then we can pull down the headliner. It basically clips and everything. So we'll go ahead and pull those down. So now, as you can see, we've got a whole mess of cables, which I guess used to be clean. Everything was you know nice and labeled and duct taped to hold everything in place to help kind of minimize the rattling, but you can see it's a bunch of cables and the headliner. I've even got like spare USB cables, depending on uh, what dash cams are going to be running up there. But uh, yeah, just a bunch of cables everywhere. Now moving on here, just next to the pedals, this is actually the primary area where uh, I pulled power for everything. These are the different fuse taps that I'll plug in that make it really easy to add additional accessories. If we start pulling these cables out back here, you'll find a bunch of different stuff attached with T-taps. And uh, I've got everything labeled. You can see this is the radar detector. Uh, here's one of the stinger cables. What is this? 
uh, oh, it looks like it's kind of faded, but that's a cigarette lighter expansion port. So pretty much everything here is labeled as far as uh, what it goes to to make it easier for troubleshooting or whatever else later. I guess now we can go ahead and start pulling all these out of circuits and then take uh, the original fuse and start putting them back in. Back underneath here, we've got more cables, so we just need to start pulling out everything. Oh, for my radar detector, I've been using the, uh, the V1 connector just because I can use it with the V1 and most everything else without conflict. So this has been really nice, and then I can switch between Android and iPhone connectors, which I just pulled out for uh, some of the test driving, but it's normally mounted back here. Now there's another area of expansion actually tucked over here on this side underneath the steering wheel. Now once we've pulled off the plastic piece and then the metal piece uh, here underneath the steering wheel, uh, I've got some uh, USB expansion ports. So another one of these cigarette lighter splitters. Uh, it's actually hardwired like you can see here. Um, and then that has uh, some more cigarette lighter ports in case I want to plug stuff in. And then a bunch of USB ports, again for more uh, dash cams or cell phone plugs or chargers or anything like that. Now while we're down here, uh, back behind the pedals, if you look up there, you'll see some cables actually running through the firewalls. Uh, this is actually for things not only like the steering, but also for the radar detectors and laser jammers. They're all running through there. I'm using uh, one of the existing grommets, plus I had a second one actually drilled specifically because I've got, well, way too much stuff installed in the car here. Now with the glove box removed, I uh, went ahead and took out all of the expansion power cables in there, and uh, it's time to start getting deeper into the dash, remove the ALP CPU. You can see the Stinger CPU is in there, and so it's time next to start uh, opening up all this and getting deeper into the car. Now to start taking the dash apart, uh, I want to start with the center console. I've got a number of cables, as you can see, that run under here, uh, that run front to back, either to the Redenso or the rear dash cam. Uh, you've got the ALP controller, and pretty much I need to lift this so I can start pulling out the, uh, the center. And so we've got uh, screws right there, as well as some under here. All right, so we'll start uh, removing the shift lever here. Then we're going to pop off this cover here. The wire underneath for the power windows, uh, this is kind of a pain in the butt to reconnect, so I'm gonna leave it connected for now and then just pull the cables up. Now we've got these two screws to remove to pull off the side panels and the center cluster. Got two more screws, one on either side like this to uh, remove this central area. stinger out of here. Let's take the displays off for the Redenso and for the stinger. One of the nice things about using double stick tape is uh, once it comes to uninstalling, that is way easier. A little bit of twisting to remove the stinger display. Just using double sided tape. And there it is. So as you can see, I had some tape back there. And another thing, I actually had some tape uh, lining the back of these cables just to hold them into the uh, the side of the dash here and keep the cables from flopping around and just be a little bit neater. Now removing the radar detectors, this is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, the laser jammers will take a little bit more work because they're in the grill, so I'm actually going to have to pull the whole bumper, but the radar detectors themselves should be pretty straightforward. One thing I love about uh, most all these remotes and everything are these quick release connectors, which means I can just go into the engine bay here, uh, go ahead and just start unscrewing everything. The cables come out and then I can just uh, pull these cables out through the firewall and then pull this right out from the grill. Now with the cables removed, we can then just go ahead and start taking the radar detectors and pulling them out. Ah, there we go. I uh, went out through the middle area here because this section's a little bit wider, so it's easier to push the bumper out of the way, but you can see tape there uh, and some tape there. Then at that point, you just pull and boom, radar detector out. Repeat over here. There we go, radar detector two. Let's go ahead and take off the stinger. It's uh, hooked up onto a metal plate behind the license plate. Slide it out. Uh, see, my uh, stinger antenna is a little beat up, I guess, just from being out in the elements, and the bracket's a little bit rusted, but it did the job. All right. All right, now just pull the cable through again, and stinger's out. Now for day two, I want to tackle one of the biggest and maybe most challenging parts, at least for me, is uh, I'm going to have to pull off the front bumper. Uh, now in order to remove the ALP heads, which are right there, one on either side, um, I've tried actually pushing them and pulling them and yanking them. They're not going to come out. They're jammed in there pretty tight. And I actually had a professional do the install for me as far as uh, uh, pulling the bumper, drilling the holes for the ALPs, doing that installation. And so um, I've kind of put off the whole pulling off the bumper thing, but I've uh, watched some YouTube videos. Uh, whatever some tutorials and stuff so I've got a sense as far as where everything is but hopefully this won't take too much time and will go well. 
Now to remove the front bumper, I had to make a quick stop at Home Depot to get some tools. And before heading out, I had to make my car sufficiently drivable <laughs> so that I could actually uh, make the trip. But yeah, a little fun to drive everything when it's all just kind of in pieces and cables hanging everywhere. But you know, it works. <laughs> See if this is it. Oh right, there's a couple uh, in here as well. All right, hopefully with the center bolts out now, uh, second time's the charm. There we go. I still got the uh, fog lights are attached and wired in. Now here we are, finally got this bumper disconnected. Let's go ahead and pull the uh, ALP cables out. Let's see what we're working with here. Be careful, folks, I don't wanna scratch the bumper. But uh, yeah, it looks like he actually bolted the, uh, the brackets for the heads into this uh, absorbent foam. So yeah, no wonder I couldn't pull it out just right from the front. Let's go ahead and unscrew these brackets. Whew, look at that, able to push them through. Head one, bracket one. Head two and bracket two. So yeah, that wasn't too bad. I mean, first time doing it and uh, yeah, just a couple rivets, bolts and screws and uh, it all just kind of pops off after that. So that's actually pretty cool. I'm finally glad I got uh, that taken care of. All right, so I got the bumper back on, and uh, as expected, there's a couple holes left here where the ALPs now used to be. If you take a look, you can now actually see the uh, absorbent foam back behind the bumper uh, in both areas. Um, so I guess that's one of the downside of uh, having to drill holes. You know, once you take them out, if you sell the car or switch systems or whatever, you're left with these big holes. I figure that uh, with this car, they're just gonna wind up replacing the grill. You can see areas where the grill had been cracked because somebody back backed into my car and uh, I just fixed it up with Sugru. Uh, there's another one right here that this broke and it wasn't something we could easily repair. So I figure they're just gonna wind up replacing this whole thing, but yeah, there's now holes in the grill. Next up with everything out of the grill, we can go ahead and start pulling the cables out. I've got everything kind of tucked away here. Uh, all the rut cables run from the firewall uh, out to a hole that I've got drilled in here. And so I'm just gonna head back in the firewall and start pulling. Now with the front done, we're gonna move on to the rear. So let's go ahead and take off the rear ALP heads. You can see here the uh, bracket that was fabricated, basically just a simple piece of metal and the ALP heads hook onto it right there. So simple, it worked. I wish it was a little bit stiffer, but otherwise it did the job. Now I can start pulling a bunch of plastic body panels. I've got to pop a bunch of rivets in the trunk. Now, one cable that I've had here in the trunk installed is pretty much a pull cable. Uh, when I ran some of the wiring for like the Redenso RCM, which I'll uninstall here in just a second, uh, I ran an extra cable at the same time. So uh, if I need to install something else in the rear, I can just attach it on one end and voom, yank this and it'll pull the cable right through for me. Back here on the tail light, I've installed some extra wires. This is actually to power the no photo. The cables ran through here to my license plate. And uh, when I used to run it in the rear, uh, I had it plugged in here. I wound up disconnecting it because I didn't want it uh, hooked up to my tail lights. The way that it worked is if I didn't want the no photo active, I could just turn off my lights, which worked great in the daytime, but not so much at night. And so that's actually why I stopped running it is I didn't have a way to disable it at night because it was hooked up to my lights. So for the next car, I'd like to have uh, more independent controls of that. So I got that unplugged now, and uh, next I can go under here and uh, start disconnecting my rear ALP heads. These quick release cables are awesome. They make uh, running cables and disconnecting and connecting so much easier. Back here, I've got the no photo, so I'll go ahead and pull this through. Then the ALP heads. There's one and two. Now tucked back in here, I had the Redenso RCM uh, rear antenna. Again, it was up here just above the rear tail light. Now, something that I found that I didn't realize was uh, my tape that I had here that was being used to uh, hold this up to the top there, um, yeah, apparently it didn't work that well because this thing was just, it had fallen to the ground, which would explain why my rear antenna and my arrows and my RCM wasn't working that well. So yeah, for rear antennas, don't do this. 
Now all the rear cables actually go back here on the left side of the car, so we need to head back inside and just start pulling from the inside. Next, we're gonna start pulling the Redenso, which is tucked back here. Now some of the cables from the RCM run up front, things like hooking up to the ALP, while some of the cables maybe run to the back, like the rear antenna. So, well, here they are, ALP and uh, rear RCM antennas. We can start pulling those. Uh, and here's the uh, orange pull cord as well. Now let's get this rear dash cam cable out of here. And then finally, I got to uh, remove the blend mount as well as these different uh, dash cam mounts. And all done. Here we are with the car finally back to stock. All my countermeasures up front are now completely gone. The back of the car is a standard Miata once again. And now the inside is totally normal as well now. There is no longer any dash cams, any radar detectors up on the windshield. There's no longer any ALP controllers or remotes installed there. So it is now completely back to a stock Miata. Wow. And then finally, here's a look at everything that just used to be <laughs> inside my Miata. Now looking through everything, we've got an assortment of different uh, dash cams, radar detectors, phone mounts, cables, uh, PowerMagic Pro, and three different batteries for the dash cams. Uh, moving on, we've got the ALP. So we've got the CPU, uh, four heads, two front, two rear, uh, different brackets, Bluetooth module, hi-fi, all this kind of stuff. Uh, we've got the Redenso RCM over here, so uh, two antennas, uh, RCM controller and display. Uh, oh yeah, speaking of which, NetRadar DSP. I'm going to add a rear for the next car. Uh, next up, we've got the Stinger, so we've got uh, the display, uh, the patch antenna, and then all the brains and speakers and brackets and everything. Uh, pocket radar, laser transmitter for the car, a whole assortment of cables, USB cables, power cables, uh, power splitters, uh, etc. for all the different stuff, plus some tools and lights uh, just so I can work on things. Oh, and some spare dash cam cards just in case. Now this Miata, it's been a fun car. I've really enjoyed driving it the past four and a half years. It's been a ton of fun. It's been great for a uh, radar detector tester. Uh, obviously for the next car, because I want to put all this stuff in and more, I could use something with a little bit of room. Uh, so let me know what your guesses are as far as the next vehicle. But uh, yeah, it should be something more spacious and also fun to drive. So I'm looking really forward to it. Uh, really enjoyed this car. Time to put all this stuff inside and uh, drive this car back and pick up the next one. So thanks to you guys for watching and thank you to the Miata.